We're gonna take the magnificent IDE that is Eclipse and drill a hole in it and fill that hole with uh, what we need to <laughs> make it program the Arduino. All right, let's go. <laughs> Grab your beverage of choice. I got green tea. Let's do this thing. And hopefully by the time you're done with this tutorial, you will be ready to code some level three robots, some spicy meat bots. Let's do this. All right, so first we gotta download the latest version of the Eclipse IDE or Integrated Development Environment. You can either Google it or it will be linked in the description. If you try to install it and get a prompt that, uh-oh, Java's missing, uh, you just, just click through it and you should be directed to this page. We're just gonna get the latest JDK that they list here. It's gonna take us to the page where you can accept the license and download for Windows. Technically for this, you just need the JRE and only need the JDK if you're gonna be writing Java code. Maybe you'll wanna do Java someday. Once it's downloaded, you're just gonna click through the steps, let it do its thing. And once it's done, we can go back to the downloads and rerun the Eclipse download. Um, it's gonna ask you what version, what flavor of Eclipse you want. Uh, we want it for C and C++ devs because the Arduino language is a little combo of C and C++. Uh, just accept all the licenses, trust the certificates, and boom, okay, so let's launch this thing. Um, okay, so it's gonna ask you what you want your workspace called. Uh, I'm leaving mine the default, which is Eclipse-Workspace. And the, the workspace is just the folder where all of your code files and projects will live. Obviously, the most important thing uh, is to get the dark theme enabled. <laughs> if you like the dark theme, you're gonna go to Window, Preferences, General, Appearance, and change the theme from light to dark. You're gonna apply and close. And this is a fantastic time to close Eclipse and restart your computer. Always a good idea to do this after installing or uninstalling new software. Okay, so now we need to get Eclipse all settled in and ready for Arduino code. So first you need to make sure that you have the Arduino plugin. Launch the Eclipse marketplace and once it's loaded, search Arduino and make sure that the Eclipse C++ IDE for Arduino is installed. Boom, it is. I, I believe it's installed automatically, but it doesn't hurt to double check. So now we need to install the platform for the Arduino boards that we're gonna be working with. If you're following along with the party in level three, you're gonna be using the Arduino Mega 2560 board. You're gonna click help, Arduino downloads manager, click add. And this first platform works for the Mega and the Uno and kind of the common boards, which is perfect. Uh, so you're gonna click install and when it's done, you should see it added to this list here. Bingo. Okay, click done, you're good. Okay, so the next step is to install the code libraries that we need for level three, but to test them and make sure they work once we have them, let's create our first project. So you're gonna go to new Arduino project, click Arduino sketch, give it a name and be sure that use default location is checked. Okay, then hit the restore button up here to open up the workspace. I like to resize the windows, kind of get it situated the way I like it. Here's our first code file for the Arduino. Sweet! Control shift and plus to zoom in and control and minus to zoom out. So now let's get the libraries we need for level three. A library is a bunch of background code that unlocks new commands for your robot. And we want libraries that let us use an ultrasonic sensor, a PS2 controller, and the Adafruit servo driver board included in every level three kit. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that good old ultrasonic sensor. Click add sensors, ultrasonic, and then install it and you are good. Click done. Uh, so the library is installed, but if we wanna use it in this project, we gotta add it to the project. Right click on the project, go to properties, uh, libraries tab, sensors, make sure the ultrasonic sensor is checked, click apply and close. And the final step to kind of pointing a project in Eclipse to a library you wanna use and say, hey, I wanna use this library in this code file. You gotta include the library's header file at the top of your program. To include the ultrasonic sensor library's header file in this code, we just, to include the ultrasonic sensor library's header file in this code, at the top of the code, we're gonna type pound sign include space and then ultrasonic dot H in triangle brackets or what do you, in angle brackets. Um, that's including the header file so that all those ultrasonic commands are now accessible by us. And so you're gonna build the code to make sure that there aren't any errors and boom, okay, we're good. Ultrasonic's locked down. Okay, so on to the servo driver library. So this library is gonna let us control servos via our Adafruit servo driver board. <laughs> uh, we just gotta, so we just gotta go get the library from GitHub. So you're gonna click on the link in the description to go to the GitHub repository. And I'm gonna assume that you don't have GitHub set up. So, all, so for now you can just download the zip. Then you're gonna move it into your .arduino cdt libraries folder, which is where the libraries live. And then you're going to extract it. 
So now you gotta restart Eclipse, uh, include this new library in your project via the properties tab, just like we did for Ultrasonic. Then you're gonna build it and you'll probably get this fatal error uh, that it can't find the wire library or it can't find the wire library's header file, wire.h, which is something that this Adafruit library needs to be able to interface with. Now, the easiest fix I've found for this so far is to just get the Arduino IDE, uh, which is linked in the description, uh, and you're gonna install it. You're gonna go to its hardware, Arduino, AVR, libraries folder, copy wire, and paste it in your Eclipse Libraries folder. Then try restarting Eclipse, re-include the library via the Properties tab. Let's rebuild it, and it should be happy now. That leaves us with the PS2 library. Okay, link in the description to Bill Porter's awesome library that you can download. You're gonna unzip it in the Eclipse Libraries folder, then you're gonna go inside the PS2X underscore lib folder. Now, fun fact, for libraries to work with Eclipse, they need a library properties file. At the time of this tutorial right now, there is no library properties file for this PS2 library. We're gonna try to get that added by making a pull request to the original repository on GitHub. Um, but in the meantime, I'll link you to the library properties file that we made for this library. You can download this, unzip it in the libraries folder, and you're gonna go inside and copy just the dot properties file, that's all we care about and you're gonna paste it inside of the ps2x underscore lib folder. Um, then you're gonna restart Eclipse. You're gonna include the library in your project uh, via the project's properties, and then, then include the header file. And if you get the yellow squiggly line of doom, our fix for it was to move the ps2x underscore lib folder straight up into the libraries folder and denest it, if you will. And then you're gonna restart Eclipse and it should work. This one's a little finicky. Build it and boom. No more squiggly lines of doom. We are good to go. All right, we are done with libraries. Now here are a couple more pro tips. When you're ready to download Arduino code, uh, you just gotta set up your board as a launch target. So let's open up Device Manager, then plug in the Arduino. And then we gotta find the specific name of the communication port or COM port that we just plugged into. So we can check that and it looks like it is COM port five. So remembering that COM port, you're gonna click on the launch target tab and then hit new launch target. Uh, let's click Arduino, then come up with a name that you're gonna associate with this particular Arduino. Uh, I'm calling mine my Epic Board. Uh, then pick the COM port that we just found is associated with it. Pick the board type, which for me is a Mega 2560. I'm gonna hit finish and just make sure it's selected as the active launch target uh, so that Eclipse can communicate with your particular board through this particular COM port. Okay, one more thing I noticed as I was writing some code for another tutorial. So if this highlight color annoys the hell out of you because you can't see anything behind it, you can go to Windows, then Preferences, General, Editors, Text Editors, then go to the Annotations Preference section, change the colors associated with C slash C++ Occurrences and C slash C++ Right Occurrences to something darker. Something a little easier on the eyes. All right, you are now officially ready for level three. Good luck on your quest. If you have them, leave improvements, pro tips or questions down below. All right, you got it?